What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Primetime Sports Podcast, hosted by Joey Mayolari. So this afternoon, I'm going to bring you a preview of tonight's MLB draft, and we'll give you a 15-pick mock draft with analysis behind each pick. So to start things off, the MLB draft is tonight. It will be held over three days from Sunday to Tuesday in Los Angeles. Day one is tonight at 7 p.m. on ESPN. It'll be the first two rounds with the competitive balance and compensation picks as well. The Red Sox have the 24th, 31st, and 79th overall selections. There are no trades in the MLB draft besides, I believe, competitive balance picks, so the Red Sox will be having those three picks for sure tonight. The Red Sox received the 79th overall selection as a compensation selection from losing Eduardo Rodriguez to the Detroit Tigers in the 2021 free agency class. The Red Sox lost their second round pick due to signing Trevor Story as well. Uh, so they gained the 79th pick from losing Eduardo Rodriguez, but lost their second round pick due to signing Trevor Story. Monday will be day two of the draft. Rounds three through 10 will be held on MLB.com starting at 2 p.m. I just learned that from MassLive.com. And then Tuesday will be day three of the draft. Rounds 11 through 20 will be on MLB.com once again starting at 2 p.m. So in this episode, I'm going to give you my mock draft uh, about. 15 picks, um, and I'm probably going to be given the best player available with the most talent uh, to each team, since I don't think you should have a draft for need in baseball, unless the Los Angeles Angels drafting 20 out of 20 picks last year, drafting eight, uh, all pitches uh, for the Angels, but I think talent always is best to draft in baseball, so I'm going to give you my best players and who I think should be taken at each pick based on talent. Um, So to start off the Baltimore Orioles, I have them taking Jackson Holiday, a shortstop out of Stillwater Prep, and Oklahoma, 6'1", 175, 18-year-old shortstop. Uh, One thing about the Orioles that's interesting is that they have the highest uh, bonus pool for draft picks in in the MLB draft this year with $16.9 million. It's a great opportunity for them to continue to build and get better like they have been. They've been showing a lot of progress as of late, and I'm going to break that down hopefully in an episode again this week. So anyways, I have Jackson Holiday going first overall to the Baltimore Orioles. He is the son of former MLB star Matt Holliday of the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, the Red Sox actually beat him in the World Series in 2007 when he was on the Rockies, and also in 2013 with the Cardinals in the World Series as well. Um, so Jackson, uh, a little bit more about him. He's 18 years old. He actually had the most hits ever in a single high school season. Uh, he's one of the prettiest swings in the draft. He's a lefty, has a great baseball IQ. He just won the Oklahoma Gatorade Player of the Year, and he actually broke J.T. Ramudo's Oklahoma high school record for most hits in a single uh, high school season, which was 89 uh, he hit. So he had 89 hits in 41 games, hitting 685. So 685 average is absolutely ridiculous. With the 1392 OPS, he had 17 home runs this year and only struck out seven times. So he had more than double the amount of strikeouts he had in home runs. So he doubled his strikeout rate with home runs, which is ridiculous, and more. Three more home runs on top of that. Absolutely not. 17 home runs to seven strikeouts. Um, so some of his accolades, he was a 2022 Baseball America High School Player of the Year, the 2022 Perfect Game National Player of the Year as well. Um, with this pick, I think it could be either Drew Jones or Tamar Johnson as well. Uh, there's a few others that are in the mix, but uh, Johnson has been getting a lot of buzz um, over the course of today, over the past few hours, but I still think Holiday goes first overall. I think Jones has more of a chance to go number one than Johnson, so uh, we'll see how that goes. But whoever's the first overall pick, it's an eight million uh, $842,000 slot value. So whoever's taking it this pick would be getting a lot of money. Uh, currently, Jackson Holiday's committed to Oklahoma State, but he definitely won't be uh, playing there. He'll definitely be signing with whichever team drafts him. So the next pick is the second overall pick, the Arizona Diamondbacks. I have them take a Drew Jones from the Wesleyan School in Georgia, 6'4", 180, 18-year-old outfielder. He's actually the son of former MLB great uh, Andrew Jones. So two of my top picks here are both sons of former MLB players. Uh, Andrew Jones played 17 years in the MLB, five-time All-Star, 10-time Gold Glove, Silver Slugger winner and MLB home run leader and NL Hank Aaron winner. All three of those he won, the Silver Slugger, MLP Home Run Leader, and the NL Hank Aaron Award winner in 2005, all three of those in the same season. He's actually tied for 48th in all-time home runs in Major League history, Uh, so that's very uh, exciting especially with the Sun now, probably going to be a top three pick. Um, this slot value is currently at $8.185 million. Uh, so whoever's drafted here as well will be getting a ton of money. Um, Drew Jones currently is the first overall prospect of the MLB draft on MLB.com. 
He's the best defensive center fielder in the draft, according to MLB.com. He's got a great IQ and instincts for the game as well. Uh, he actually won the Georgia's uh, Class A private school title this year, helped the school win that. He was a 2022 Gatorade uh, Player of the Year in Georgia, hit 570 with a 675 OBP, a 1026 slugging percentage, and a 1702 OPS this past year as a senior. He also had 13 home runs, so he can definitely hit for power and hit for average as well. As you see, 570 batting average, 675 on base percentage to go along with 13 home runs. He has great speed as well, for, especially for a big kid that's 6'4", 180. Uh, he had a 6'3", 160-odd dash, which is very impressive. Um, he pitched this year as well in high school. Uh, he was 8-1 and one in 33 innings with a 4.54 ERA. Obviously won't be a pitcher in the pros, but uh, shows his ability uh, to not only just play outfield, but he can pitch as well. Shows some versatility in high school, but uh, he'll definitely be just being outfielder now in the pros. Next selection is the Texas Rangers. I have them taking Tamar Johnson, a shortstop out of Mays High in Atlanta, Georgia. He's 5'10", 175, 18 years old, currently committed to Arizona State, but he'll be drafted and definitely signed with the team that he's selected by. He's regarded as arguably the best pure hitter in this draft class. Elite bat speed, great average hitter, um, but not the best uh, power swing. He's a lefty hitter, um, so he definitely has a, uh, has a smooth swing. But uh, one thing with him, though, is uh, he has the best pure hit tool in the draft with a hit tool of 70 out of 80. Um, hit tool is a skill that's ranked from 20 to 80. It's scored um, for all five tools from hit tool, which is hitting for average. So I just said he's he's great. He's a great average hitter, so great for average. Uh, it's also accounts for power, so home run uh, power ability, speed, defense, and arm strength. Those are the five tools uh, that are counted in those five. Um, he was a shortstop at high school, but definitely be probably moving to second base uh, since he's not the best defender, which may hurt his draft stock. Uh, you definitely don't want to see him falling out of the top five, though, uh, just because of his ability fielding, because his hitting ability is so good, he should definitely be a top five pick. But you never know how a GM rates his fielding ability, and maybe he ends up falling out of the top five. But if I was the one drafting, I think he should be a top five pick, probably three, uh, in my opinion. So with the average arm strength, though, um, that definitely hurts his draft stock, but his ability to hit definitely will help him. Uh, there's currently buzz that he'll be going first overall, so we'll definitely see where he goes. But I've him going third overall to the Texas Rangers with a 7.587 current slot value. So if he's taken there, he's going to get a ton of money. A lot of these kids are going to be making money. Uh, the fourth overall pick of the Pittsburgh Pirates taking Brooks Lee, a shortstop out of Cal Poly, 6'2", 205, 21 years old. He's the fifth overall MLB.com prospect. He was actually a 35th round draft pick of the San Francisco Giants in 2019. He didn't sign, though, because he ended up uh, committing to Cal Poly after his senior year of high school and told you know every team that's probably going to draft him earlier than 35th round that he was going to be going to Cal Poly to play under his father, who was actually the head coach at Cal Poly, uh, which is really cool. Uh, so one thing about Brooks Lee is that he's a switch hitter, currently regarded as the best college player in the draft. Speed probably causes him uh, to have to play third base since he doesn't have the best range at shortstop, so he'll probably be, end up becoming a corner infielder at third base in the pros. He actually won the Big West Conference Co-Player of the Year. And another thing about him is that he struck out under 10% of his at-bats this past year, which is elite. He actually had an unreal summer as well in the Cape Cod League last summer of, uh, for the Yum at Dennis Red Sox in 2021. He had a 405 batting average with a 432 on base percentage, a 1099 OPS with six home runs, 13 RBIs, and 21 games for the Yum at Dennis Red Sox. He did suffer two devastating injuries in his freshman season of 2020 at Cal Poly, uh, which kept him out for most of that season right before COVID hit and the season was shortened anyways. In his sophomore season of 2021, he definitely stayed healthy. In 55 games, he had 342 to go along with a 1-0-1-0 OPS, 10 home runs at 57 runs batted in. In his junior season of 2022 for the Cal Poly Mustangs, he had 15 home runs with 55 RBIs, a 357 batting average, which went up from his sophomore season to his junior season. He does not have great speed, though, so who knows how scouts will interpret his abilities and how they'll rate it, but his ability to get the bat of the ball at any speed, whether it's a 90-mile-hour fastball or an 80-mile-hour curveball, uh, is truly amazing, uh, and he does not swing and miss on fastballs often, so I think he'll end up being a top-five pick. I have him going fourth overall to the Pittsburgh Pirates. At number five, I have the Washington Nationals taking Jacob Berry, a third baseman slash outfielder, six foot, 212 from LSU, 21 years old. He's the current seventh overall prospect on MLB.com. Uh, he played at Arizona as a freshman in 2021 for one year before transferring to LSU for a sophomore year. Ended up playing just one season there as well. He had 17 home runs with 70 RBIs, a 439 on base percentage, and a 1115 OPS in 63 games as a freshman at Arizona. Then at LSU, he had 370. 
to go along with a 464 on base percentage, 15 home runs, 48 RBIs, and a 1094 OPS with 47 runs scored at LSU as a sophomore, um, as I just said, in just 53 games. So 15 home runs to go along with 47 runs scored in 53 games is very good, especially to go along with those 48 RBIs. Uh, he's a switch hitter, has very good power. Uh, one thing about him, though, is that he has an average glove and not great speed, which is a reason that I believe he'll end up becoming um, probably just an outfielder, maybe a left fielder or a third baseman, so he doesn't have to use as much range. He's not going to be a center fielder or a shortstop in the pro level. Uh, so I think he'll end up becoming probably a third baseman, be a corner infielder, so he doesn't have to move as much as he doesn't have great feet. Uh, he ended up becoming a designated hitter for a lot of the time he was at LSU, so that just shows he doesn't really have the range to play a center field or shortstop position. So he'll probably become a third baseman at the pro level, uh, if not a designated hitter. Sixth overall, I have the Miami Marlins taking Gavin Cross, a six foot three, two ten outfielder who played at Virginia Tech, 21 years old. He's a lefty hitter with decent power and a solid glove. Uh, got good speed, not great speed. He played for Brewster in the Cape Cod Baseball League last summer. He actually won the championship with them. Two home runs and two RBIs. Only hit 105, though, in those games with Brewster. Was 2 for 19 in seven games. In his junior year at Virginia Tech, though, his bat was great. Had 17 home runs with 50 runs batted in and 12 stolen bases with zero caught steals. So it shows he has good speed. A 328 batting average and a 1071 OPS to go along with a 411 on base percentage in 57 games with the Hokies this past year. He helped Virginia Tech actually make the NCAA tournament. They were actually a one seed as well. So uh, they were, he was a big reason they made it to where they did this season. Seventh overall, I have the Chicago Cubs taking Elijah Green, a 6'3", 225 outfielder, 18-year-old from IMG Academy in Florida. Third overall prospect on MLB.com. Such a highly regarded prospect with elite speed, elite power, and great arm strength uh, as well. He's a great outfielder, too, so he's definitely going to be drafted, I believe, in the top 10. Six foot three with a big frame will only develop more over time uh, since he's only 18 years old. 462 batting average in 25 games at IMG this past year. 32 runs batted in, 11 doubles. Two triples, nine home runs, and 15 stone bases and 15 attempts. So he was never caught standing at IMG, which is the most impressive stat of his. He'll definitely be a short top 10 pick, in my opinion. I have him going seventh overall to the Chicago Cubs. Then at eighth overall, the Minnesota Twins selecting Kevin Parada, a 6'1", 197-pound catcher, 20 years old, out of Georgia Tech. He could have been a top three-round pick in the 2020 MLB draft out of high school, according to MLB.com. But he ended up being a hard commit to Georgia Tech, and so he was never drafted in that draft class. He was the best catcher in this class, though, coming into this draft. Uh, they always say the best way to get to the major leagues is to be a catcher since there aren't many great ones. As seen by the struggle of the MLB to find an all-star catcher that could hit over 270. Alejandro Kirk is an all-star for the AL this year, hitting 315 for Toronto. But the next closest batting average of a catcher is Will Smith of the Dodgers with a 272 average. So catchers just nowadays don't give you much offensive help. So the best way to get to the MLB is to be an offensive catcher. He played just two seasons. Now this is Parada. Played just two seasons at Georgia Tech, but is coming off a great sophomore season, hitting 361 in 60 games with a 453 OBP and a 1162 OPS to go along with 26 home runs, which was actually tied for sixth in all of Division I baseball. The most among all catches in college baseball as well. He had 88 runs batted in, which was the third most in all of Division I baseball. 11 stolen bases and 12 attempts. And he also scored 79 runs, which is actually good enough to be fourth most in all of college baseball. So as you see, he helps you a ton in the offensive end. 88 RBIs, third most in college baseball, 26 home runs. The most among catches in college baseball. Tied to sixth in all of college baseball, regardless of position. And then also 79 runs scored, which was fourth in college baseball. So it just shows the amount of offensive help he can add to your lineup. He actually played for the Chatham A's in the Cape Cod Baseball League in 2021. Hit 250 with three RBIs and a 344 OBP and a 665 OPS in nine games. He has very good power as seen by the 26 home runs, which was actually a Georgia Tech school record, but his defense definitely needs to get better. He's only 20 years old, so I think that would develop over time. With the ninth overall selection, I have the Kansas City Royals taking Cam Collier, 6'2", 210, 17-year-old third baseman from Chipola Junior College in Florida. This is actually a $5.2 million slot value, so the slot value goes down over time, so how much money each player is going to sign for goes down over time. He's only 17 years old and won't turn 18 until November. He's the eighth overall prospect on MLB.com. He's actually the son of former MLB player Luke Collier. 
One thing about him is that he also played in the Cape Cod League this summer. Uh, as pointed out by Keith Law of The Athletic, he left high school to get his GED after his sophomore year to attend Chipola Junior College, kind of like what Bryce Hopper did, uh, leaving high school, ended up working out for Bryce, and then obviously hopefully it works out for Collier. Collier has a Louisville commit, but I doubt he ends up being a Cardinal, unless it were to be the St. Louis Cardinals at 22 overall, but I highly doubt that as well. He won't be a Louisville Cardinal, we know that. He has a very nice swing, a decent speed, great arm strength as well. He actually had a 70 out of 80 rating uh, on his arm strength from third base, which is very impressive. Hit 333 with the 419 OBP and a 956 OPS to go along with eight home runs, 47 RBIs, and 12 doubles in 52 games for Chipola this year. He also pitched a little for Chipola in 11.1 innings this year. He had a 462 ERA, which wasn't great. So as you can see, he'll definitely only be a third baseman at the pro level and will not be a pitcher. So as I mentioned, he played this summer for Katuit in the Cape Cod Baseball League in nine games. He went 5 for 23 so far with a 217 batting average, struck out six times to six walks, one RBI, no home runs, so he did not show the power at all. But I think, obviously, only 17 years old playing college players, and he really should be going into his freshman year of college now. Not easy for a kid just jumping in and just starting to play. Uh, but at the end of the day, he should have been a 2023 draft Pick. So that means he would have been actually a high school, going into his high school senior year. So playing Cape Cod kids this summer is very impressive. So even though he's hitting 215, as I said, a 217, still very impressive since he should be a 2023 draft pick rather than 2022. But reclassing, obviously getting his GED, he tried to get drafted early. And I think it ended up working out for him. He should be a top 10 pick. Um, with the Colorado Rockies at the 10th overall selection, I have them taking Jace Jung, a second baseman out of Texas Tech, 21 years old, 6 foot, 205 uh, pounds. Uh, the 10th overall pick will be getting $4.98 million as a slot value. Um, he has great power and great average, um, great hit for average, that is, for Jung. Uh, 60 out of 80 on both of those, hit for power and then hit for average. He does not have a great arm or great glove, which is why I don't think he'll be playing third base in the pros. I think he makes the transition to just completely playing second. Uh, he struggled in the Cape Cod Baseball League this past summer um, in 2021, hitting just 219 in eight games with one home run and nine RBIs. His sophomore year at Texas Tech, though, in 2021, he had a very good year, 337 batting average, 21 home runs, 67 RBIs. 10 doubles, a triple, and a 1159 OPS. In his junior year this past year at Texas Tech, in 2022, he had 335 with 14 home runs, 57 runs batted in, and a 1093 OPS to go along with 68 runs scored. Uh, so even though he struggled in the Cape Cod League, it's not always easy just jumping in only playing eight games. I think if he played a longer season, let's say 15, 20 games, obviously I think those stats get better. I think they average out a little more. And I think he shows the power, especially the power he showed in his sophomore year at Texas Tech before he played in the Cape Cod League last summer. 21 home runs in a sophomore year at Texas Tech in 2021, hitting 337 to go along with that. And then just goes to the Cape Cod League just after that in 2021 and only at 219. But I think if he played more games, he'd definitely have more than one home run and definitely hit better than 219. With the 11th overall selection, I have the New York Mets taking Zach Neto, a six foot 185 shortstop out of Campbell University. He's 21 years old, 17th overall prospect at MLB.com. He's an All-American shortstop. I mentioned him actually in my college baseball special, uh, which was episode four, I believe. He pitched at Campbell as well, uh, 386 ERA, eight strikeouts at 4.2 innings. His fastball actually got up to 93, so that just shows he has the ability to, th to throw across a diamond too from shortstop. He won the Cape Cod Baseball League last summer in 2021 with the Brewster Whitecaps. He had three home runs, 10 RBIs, hit 304 with a 439 on base percentage and a 1026 OPS in 16 games for the Whitecaps. This past year with the Campbell Fighting Camels in 53 games, he had 407, which was good enough to be sixth in all of Division I baseball. Had a 1283 OPS, 15 home runs, 50 RBIs, and a 514 on base percentage, which was fifth in all of Division I baseball. He had the 16th most hits in Division I baseball with 81, and also had 19 stolen bases in 20 attempts. Uh, he's a very aggressive base, base still and not afraid to steal or try to take an extra base as seen with his 23 doubles. He had two triples as well, so it shows he has great speed around the bases and is never afraid to take an extra base, whether that's stealing second or trying to get an extra base, trying to get a double out of a single. Uh, he actually led Campbell to a 41-19 and season uh, record this past year. They won the Big South and also beat Georgia Tech in the first game of the Knoxville Regional. Netto was 3-4 for in that game with a double, a stolen base, four runs scored, and two bases on balls. Uh, so he was 5-6 for six on base in that game. They actually lost the next game 12-7 to seven to Tennessee. He was actually 3-5 of five in that game as well with two stolen bases, a double, and a run scored. Uh, in his sophomore year in 2021, at Campbell. He had 12 home runs, 58 RBIs, and a 405 on base percentage, 
to go along with the one two three four OPS. He had a four oh three batting average in all of his years in college baseball, which was very impressive. Um, Neto could possibly be the first uh, first round pick in Campbell history, which would be unreal. I definitely see him going in the first round, so he should be able to be the first one ever. His great versatility is seen by his ability to play first base, second base, shortstop, and third base this past year for the Fighting Campbells. And if he were to be this overall uh, pick at eleven by the New York Mets, he'd be making four point seven seven eight million. At least that's what the slot value is as of now. Uh, the Mets currently have five top picks in. Five picks in the top 90 selections. They have the 11th overall pick, which is this pick. Um, it's compensation since they were not able to sign their first-round pick last year, Kumar Rocker, out of Vanderbilt. And that was due to concerns with his medical evaluation. So they ended up getting the 11th overall pick as compensation for that. With the 12th overall selection of the Detroit Tigers taking Jordan Beck, a six foot three, 225-pound, 21-year-old outfielder from Tennessee. He hit 298 this past year as a junior at Tennessee with 18 home runs, 61 RBIs, and a 986 OPS to go along with 15 doubles and three triples. As a sophomore in 2021 with the Vols, he had 15 home runs and 64 RBIs and also a 271 for an average. He has a big frame with a ton of ability and growth as he's only 21 years old and actually he's coming off a great season. Uh, he actually played for Hawich in the Cape Cod Baseball League in 2021. In 27 games, he had two home runs, 10 RBIs, seven stolen bases in eight attempts, which is very impressive. For a guy didn't steal many bases in college at Tennessee. A 267 batting average with a 777 OPS. He did strike out 36 times to 15 walks, so not a great strikeout to walk ratio there. I think he has to improve there, but I have him going 12th overall to the Detroit Tigers. This current slot value. For the Detroit Tigers, is four million five hundred eighty-seven thousand nine hundred dollars. So, as you see, the slot values do go down uh, each and every pick in the first round. With the thirteenth overall selection, I have the Los Angeles Angels taking Daniel Susak, a catcher, six-four. 218-pound, 21-year-old catcher from Arizona. The Angels took pitches with all of their 20 draft selections in the 2021 MLB draft, 19 college pitches and one high school pitcher. That was actually the first draft in MLB history where a team drafted all pitches with every one of the selections. They currently do not have a second-round pick. Uh, they won't have a second-round pick. I shouldn't say currently. As I said, there are no trades in the MLB draft. They do not have a second-round pick after they signed Noah Syndergaard to a one-year deal in the offseason. Uh, since he rejected his qualifying offer from the Mets, he, they end up forfeiting, that's the Angels, end up forfeiting their second-round selection. Susak has a very good arm and great arm strength behind the plate. Uh, leaving Arizona after only being a sophomore, um, he has a great bat, as seen by his very good average, and shows some power as well in both of his seasons at Arizona. As a freshman in 2021, in 61 games, he had 335 for an average with a 983 OPS, 12 home runs, 65 runs batted in, 19 walks, to 47 strikeouts, which is not great. Uh, 24 doubles. Did not actually steal a base in either season in Arizona, so does not have great speed at all. At a, as a sophomore in 2022, in 64 games, he had 366, so his batting average went up. He was 100 for 273 at the plate. He had a 430 on base percentage to go along with 12 home runs, 61 runs batted in. And also, once again, strikeout to walk ratio, not great. 52 strikeouts to 23 walks. He did have two triples, so I guess he shows some speeder on the bases. 24 doubles his freshman year, two triples his second year at Arizona. And then you look at it, he also had a 1012 OPS. So two very good years offensively for him at Arizona. He had 100 hits, which is very impressive. And then also, one thing he has to work on is being more patient at the plate. But as I say that, he had 335 and 366. So he definitely can hit for average, um, but he does strike out a ton. I think that's something he has to prove upon. With the 14th overall selection, I have the Mets now taking their second pick in their last three picks. I said the 11th pick, I had them taking Zach Neto. Now with this pick at 14, I have them taking Kate Horton, a 6'1", 211 right-handed pitcher, 20 years old out of Oklahoma, 211 pounds, so he's a little big. Uh, fastball gets up to 98 miles an hour with a great breaking ball and great depth as well. In 7.2 innings pitched, he had 13 strikeouts and two earned runs in the NCAA tournament versus Ole Miss in the College World Series Finals. And if you think about it, that's really impressive since Ole Miss actually ended up beating Oklahoma in the College World Series final. So very impressive game there by Horton. And actually, though, in all five of his last starts at Oklahoma, he allowed two runs or less. And all five of them pitched against some great lineups over that five-game stretch. Went at least five innings pitched in all of those against Texas, Florida, Virginia Tech, Notre Dame, and Ole Miss. 
Great baseball schools, great programs. He was elite at the College World Series despite struggling heavily during the regular season earlier in the year. He finished the year with a 5-2 record with a 4-8-6 ERA and 53 and two-thirds innings pitched, uh, along with 29 earned runs, striking out 64 and walking 15. That's a great ratio right there. 64 strikeouts to 15 walks. He went off in the Big 12 Championship and then just really took off after that in the NCAA Tournament and then just rose to the top all the way up to the College World Series. It got a lot of attention. So I've been going 14th overall to the New York Mets. As I said, his breaking ball is very good, great depth, and also his fastball gets up to 98. He also played in the field at Oklahoma, which is really impressive as well since he pitched and hit. He hit for Oklahoma in 54 games. He hit 235 with one home run, 17 RBIs, and a 648 OPS. So makes the right decision by going all in on pitching rather than trying to be a hitter and a pitcher as well. Uh, for the San Diego Padres, with the 15th overall selection, my last pick of this mock draft, I have them taking Kumar Rocker, a six foot five, 245 pound right handed pitcher, 22 years old. He was the 10th overall pick in the last year's draft, the 2021 draft, that is. After three elite years at Vanderbilt, but he actually did not sign due to health and medical conditions that the Mets were not a fan of uh, after looking at his physical stand up, not signing to a deal. So I have him going 15th overall now in this draft since he was able to reclass into this draft class after playing a year uh, in the Independent Frontier League. Uh, he played for the Tri City Valley Cats in the Independent League in five starts, 1 0 record with a 1.35 ERA and 20 innings pitched, along just three earned runs, four walks, and 32 strikeouts. So, eight strikeouts. Uh, that's his ratio, eight strikeouts to one walk, which is really impressive. 32 strikeouts to four walks, 11 hits allowed with a .75 whip. Just three earned runs, very great as well. Fastball still gets up to 98 miles an hour, so shows he really hasn't taken too much of his abilities off by taking off a year and playing in the independent league. So he should, didn't, when he didn't sign with the Mets, he was able to sign with an independent team, and it ends up working out for him. He's able to go back into the MLB draft this year and potentially be drafted once again in the first round and still make some money. As I said, he was a 10th overall pick in last year's draft, and it just didn't work out with the Mets. In his freshman season, though, at Vanderbilt, he had a 12-5 record, a 3-2-5 ERA, and 99.2 innings pitched, a 114 strikeout to 21 walk ratio, which is unreal, 36 earned runs in those 99.2 innings. In the shortened 2020 sophomore season of his, he had a 2-1 record with a 1-8 ERA, 3 earned runs at 15 innings pitched, to go along with 28 strikeouts to 8 walks. And then his junior season was just his best season overall in 122 innings pitched, 37 earned runs, 179 strikeouts in those 122 innings pitched to 39 walks, had a 14-4 record with a 2.73 ERA. And as I said, he played in the Tri-City Valley Cats team uh, rotation this past year in the Independent League and played very well with the 1.35 ERA. So I have him going 15th overall to the San Diego Padres. And then for the Red Sox selection, as I said, they have the 24th overall pick in this year's draft. In the first round, I'm going to give you three prospects I would like to see the Red Sox potentially take at that selection. So Drew Gilbert, 5'9", 185-pound outfielder from Tennessee. A little bit undersized, but he had a great year this year for the Vols. Has great arm action for, has a great arm action from the outfield as well, great arm strength. Uh, his fastball hit middle to upper 90s, up to 92-93 out of the bullpen this year for Tennessee as he was a reliever as well. He helped Tennessee have the best overall seed in the NCAA tournament this past year. And then in 2021, actually, he helped them make the College World Series with four home runs in his last seven games of the 2021 season, which was very great uh, for him. Great finish to the year and then had a great year this year as well. Carried well into his junior year. He had 11 home runs with 70 RBIs and a 362 batting average in 58 games this past year in 2022 as a junior with four stolen bases and a 455 on base percentage. He had a 1128 OPS. His strikeout to walk ratio was great this year. He actually walked more than he actually struck out this past year. 33 walks to 32 strikeouts, and he also scored 60 runs. So a very great year for him for Tennessee. In seven games this year in relief out of the pen, he had eight and, eight and one-third innings pitched. He actually had a zero ERA, allowing no runs, three hits, five strikeouts to eight walks, and a .96 whip in those seven games. In his sophomore season of 2021 at the plate, he had 10 home runs and had 62 RBIs to go along with a 274 batting average. So shows he's been a great player in all of his years at Tennessee, and I would love the Red Sox to potentially take him. The next pick I would like the Red Sox to potentially take if they were not to take uh, Drew Gilbert is Blake Tidwell. He's a six foot four, 207-pound pitcher, 21-year-old right-handed pitcher from Tennessee, so another Tennessee prospect. He was 10-3 as a freshman on the mound in 2021 in 18 starts. His fastball stays mid to upper 90s, actually gets up to 99, so 99 miles an hour. He lights up the radar gun. 90 strikeouts to 34 walks, 
84 hits and 41 earned runs and 98.2 innings pitched as a freshman and nine starts and 13 appearances as a sophomore in 2022. He had a three ERA with a three and two record, 39 innings pitched. He only allowed 13 runs and also had a 51 strikeout to 11 walk ratio. So 51 strikeouts to 11 walks, very good, and allowed 31 hits in those 39 innings. So great year for him. I'd love the Red Sox to potentially take him as well. And then the last guy, Peyton Graham, six foot three, 185. Uh, pound 21-year-old shortstop out of Oklahoma. He played for the Yamaha Tennis Red Sox in the Cape Cod Baseball League in 2021. In 24 games, he had 247 with a 738 OPS, two home runs, seven RBIs, three stolen bases, four doubles, and 20 were unscored. He actually improved his speed heavily this year. The most stolen bases he had in either of his two years heading into this year at Oklahoma was eight stolen bases his freshman year. His sophomore year, he had seven. This past year, he had 34 stolen bases and 36 attempts in his junior season of 2022. So he had 34 stolen bases to go along with 20 home runs, 71 runs batted in, 28 walks to 69 strikeouts. So his strikeout to walk ratio definitely was not great. 69 strikeouts to 28 walks. But he did hit 335 and also had a 1058 OPS. He was a big reason Oklahoma made it to the College World Series this past year despite losing to Ole Miss in the finals. Very impressive of them to even make it since it really is so hard to make. You start out with 64 teams just making it to the finals is an accomplishment on its own for Graham he shows a lot of pop off his bat and will definitely have to improve his strikeout to walk ratio I think that will come with time since he's only 21 years old he won't be in the MLB you know who knows how many years but he'll have two to three years at least to develop in the minors so I think he'll definitely be able to work on that three years from now who knows what it'll look like but very good year for him this past year at Oklahoma 34 stone bases probably his most impressive stat but then also had 20 home runs and also had 335 so He's had a great year for them at Oklahoma this past year, and I would love the Red Sox to potentially take him. So the three guys I would like the Red Sox to potentially take, Drew Gilbert, outfielder from Tennessee, Blake Tidwell, a pitcher from Tennessee, and then Peyton Graham, a 21-year-old shortstop out of Oklahoma. So we'll see how it goes. But anyways, thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen to this. I really appreciate it, and I look forward to being back on here again soon. To give some updates on the NBA and what's going on in free agency, give you my NHL draft recap from last week, and then also break down what happened in the MLB draft tonight in the first round and the second round. Thank you guys so much for listening. I appreciate it.